What's up, y'all? Come on, it's Candice. You're me on my everything. All I know is I found the one. Yes, Candice. This is my shit. I don't care what y'all say. I don't care what y'all say. Somebody told me, what's going on, y'all? It's me, Erica. We down here. I've been gone for two days. Diva needed a break, okay? She needed a break. I need to relax. I just need to relax and not talk about nobody or nothing. But we go, we down here. We talked about Martell and Heavenly's interview, baby. Oh my God. It was funny. Somebody told me to, to somebody told me to stream uh, Monique's song. And it don't have nothing to do with Monique or Candace. Candace's song is the best song of any housewife. Whoever put out a song, whoever put out a song, then comes Nene. She might be next, but that's it. But this this song really gives me a 90s vibe, or late 90s, early 2000s R&B vibe. And her voice, and even though she's only 33 years old, is very clear what demographic they wanted to, wanted this song to resonate with. Yes, I love this song. I've been listening to it all morning. And I was like, come on, Candace. And you know, some people are like, you know, her voice, you can still hear her voice. Like, it's not a real, like, um, you know, like um, a challenge. The song is not a challenge. It's very, like, regular. I, I was laughing when Funky Don Eva. <laughs> Bitch, I was laughing so hard when Funky Don Eva was like, you know, it's like, a, you know, if it came out in the 90s or whatever, you know, Candace can't really do pop. You know, that's for Britney Spears. And I went, I was like, how old is Britney Spears, bitch? Britney Spears is 38 years old. <laughs> Candace is 33. <laughs> oh, somebody told me to stream drag queens. No. <laughs> But really, the, it's the beginning of the song for me. It's the, it's the beginning of the song, even before the chorus. The way she just comes in. And then when you listen to the original song, it's not that different. It's just, I don't know, they, he did a really good job. He really did a good job. Because I was like, let me listen to the original. Because the original, I was just like, ooh, girl, I don't know. But, um, <laughs> but I like it. I really like this song. I don't know what heals a heart or where to start yes this is the part to describe how much i love you Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut all that out cuz I'm gonna definitely get a copyright strike. I'll cut all that out. Okay, so let's talk about yeah, I like it. I like that beginning. I can listen to the beginning over and over again because it was when she says, "I love it." I, I, it's a, it's a, it resonates with me really well. I'm like, they did, he did good. This now, now you, you could take the dude's voice out. I know he's like a, a DC, you know, regular or something like that. But I like. Come on, Candice. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stream drag queens. Whether I. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I gotta. Well, I gotta go listen to it again. I heard it one time. I saw the um, lyrical video on YouTube. I was like, "Ooh, she really made a song about beating that girl's butt." Ooh. And then and then turned around and said it was about bullying. Girl, you mean how you got how you gathered everybody at the beginning before the season started so they could bully Candace with some fake story you told? We're not gonna talk about you, Monique. Anyway, anyway, so let's talk about. I took a lot of notes and I'm down here, so I got a, I got I got some time today to talk about Martell and Heavenly, and I took a lot of notes. But baby, there was some parts to that damn interview. Oh my god, it was so funny when Heavenly started questioning. Uh, Cause at first she was trying to stay, she was trying to stay calm, and I knew when I said Martell is interviewing with Heavenly, he has seen, and he said it at the beginning. He said, "You know, I've seen you. You know, when it comes to um, men and women relationships, um, 
I see that, you know, you're not biased. Basically, you take the man's side. <laughs> When somebody says you're not biased, normally it's because they believe they they agree with everything you're saying. And the person who doesn't agree with everything you're saying, you're biased to them. We know how it works, y'all. We know how it works. It's not how it works, but that's how a lot of people operate. As long as you agree with me, I'm not biased. But when you don't agree with me, all of a sudden, oh, Erica, you so biased. You understand? Know I know what it is. I'm like, oh, you just agree with me. Because... That's you just simply agree with my point of view. So I think that's the reason why Martel wanted to interview with Heavenly because Heavenly, a lot of Heavenly's advice to women, a lot of Heavenly's perspective and points of view are very much male identified. She very much centers the man and her advice is always the out, the outcome is always to serve the man and to center the man and i think that's what he thought he was going to get out of her but you're not talking about a husband and wife relationship we're talking about you cheating on your wife and i don't think heavenly was too keen on that because at the end of the interview she started to get personal like I would never let my daughter date you. I would never let any of my friends date you. I would never because you just look like a cheater. Now, what does a cheater look? Let me let me go through my notes. Okay. Um so Martel has his, they called her the mistress at first until Heavenly called her name. I said, "Call that lady's name. You better call her name. Call her damn name. Ariane. Okay. She's pregnant 5 to 7 months. Um, what I get from, from Martel, I usually don't like to say his name when I usually, if you ever notice when I talk about <clears throat> bitch, <laughs> bitch, <laughs> when Rodney called it love and hip hop Huntsville, bitch, <laughs> Woo, when he called it love and hip hop Huntsville, I hollered. Let me tell you something. When I watch Love and Marriage Huntsville, if you ever watch when I talk about them, I talk about the women and I refer to the men as the women's husbands. I don't mention their names because they're really, uh -uh, I, especially that one with that with that mouth who don't look like he have any front teeth. That other one. Um, and they're really, you know, aspects of, there are different aspects of of men and they do represent those three men represents three types of men and i've always gotten from martel that he was very much petty and he enjoys being petty and he likes being petty and he models this air of calmness right and confidence right he's very confident and when he's and but he's also petty at the same time and you could see it and he seems to enjoy being petty like he i don't know what sign martel is but he seems to enjoy being petty he's just petty like I, and i feel like he's i don't i don't even want to say it's childish it's not even childish it's just like i'm a it's a tit for tat very much a tit for tat type of energy i'm gonna get you i'm gonna do you better than you did me type of type of energy that i get from martel and i've always got that from martel and i've said that martel and Mel melody are both very petty like call them the petties that's what i have said before because they're both very petty and that's probably what kind of propped them together but let's talk um i said he enjoys the mess i i really believe that he does heavenly at the beginning of the ep of the interview and uh, you know several times throughout commended um martel on being a good father and a good dad and he takes care of his kids and from what i've seen and to and to martel's um um expression he did say that he's the dominant parent and he does look like the dominant parent he does but i think that we're so fucked up in our community that men doing what they're supposed to do in a family dynamic is rewarded and praised because there are so many who do not and that's why we're like, girl, why are you commending him for stuff that he's supposed to do? There are a lot of men who are not in the, you know, not together with the, um, the, well, you got a man in the same group, Marceau, Marcel, whatever, 
Letitia's husband, okay? She, um, you see, he doesn't take care of the kids at all. He doesn't even see it as, and he's married, right? There's married men and men who are not like living with their children, who are not, who are not present in their child's life. A phone call here and there, that goes into the, um, to Shay and her mother. Y'all always think the daddy is the good cop. Because he doesn't have to be there to reinforce rules. He's not there to um, give rules, to provide structure, to hand out discipline. He's not there for that. So the mother is always like the one doing it. In this case, we see Martel, to me, what I've seen, and I'll have to agree with him, he is the dominant parent. And I and it was noticeable because so many men, the the norm the the normalcy of men not being present in their children's lives makes someone like Martel stand out. Because you don't get credit. You don't get kudos. When you have a child, your job is to ensure that while that child is dependent on you for their survival, that you make sure they don't die right <laughs> and you make sure they have everything they, they they need in addition to the affection the nurturing the structure the discipline the rules the goals all of that to support them uplift them you know you know encourage them to do great things that's what parents are supposed to do right and and i don't I don't I can't get with commending people for doing what they're supposed to do. I can't. So I'm not giving Martel kudos for something he's supposed to do. I would say to other men, look at Martel. That's what you should be doing. Like maybe he could be an example to other men, but you're not getting any kudos. You're just not. Um I wrote inauthentic petty energy. Um he seems like you know, I don't think he's narcissistic at all. I don't think it's a narcissism thing. I mean, we all have a bit of narcissism narcissism in us. Um, otherwise, social media and Instagram and all that stuff wouldn't be as pos popular as it is. And we do all that, but I don't see I don't I don't see a narcissist when I look at um, Martel. I see a asshole. Right. I think a lot of people use the word narcissist to describe asshole energy. Right. You dealing with a motherfucking asshole who's self-centered. Right. And you think that's narcissism. If you've ever dealt with a narcissist, it's not fun. It's not fun. It's not fun at all. At all. And they don't to me. From what I've seen in my experience, that that's not Martel. Martel is just a slick mouth, arrogant asshole. That's it. And anybody can get with him. He was laughing his stuff with Heavenly because Heavenly was like asking him, let me, let me go through it. She said when she first met him that she told Melody, he's a cheater, ain't he? And she said, you just look like a hoe. And he was like, well, why does a decent looking man? It's not that Martel. It's not that you decent looking and he is a decent looking brother. But you just have an air about you that's very arrogant and confident. And Martel, on paper, what did I write? I wrote something. On paper, you would be like, oh, girl, what? Yes, T let me talk to him. But then you get into who his personality. On the business side, you know, he's educated, went to school, got his business, run a successful business. You And you look at their marriage you would be like oh my god they really are doing things together you know he talked about you know lifting melody up and supporting her dreams he did accuse melody little dog where are you going he did accuse melanie of cheating on him and then he said he that he's not sure if she did so he's looking for an excuse hold on one second. and so i think that oh yeah he really thought he thought he thought heavenly was gonna be in agreement with him and she he really thought that she was going to um i think take his side a lot i really thought i think that he really thought that's the reason why he did an interview and he said that you know melanie melody has a platform i really don't do this he was very calm at first and he and the just the way that he acts like when heavenly um <laughs> when heavenly when heavenly was she misunderstood him when he was saying first of all when he released 
medical information on Melody and said that Melody had two, maybe two abortions, one or two abortions. I think she went through it twice. I don't know. And he was doing all this. He was like, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. He was very calm, very calm. And I'm like, something's that. That something's not right with this dude. He's just so petty to me. That's what I just get from him. Like, he's so petty. You have like, you can't, you can't do nothing to him because he's gonna do it back. He's not, he's not like, he's just petty. I don't even know what other way to describe it. But he says, um. When something happens in a marriage or a relationship that a woman comes out and blasts the man and it could be damaging for the man. And I'm saying to myself, is Melody talking about you cheating on her damaging or you cheating on her damaging? Like to me, her talking about it is not going to is not damaging to you. You actually not being able to control yourself right and have self-control the, the lack of self-control that we're not seeing right because he's very very calm but you lack self-control otherwise like heavenly said when your wife started stopped having sex with you as the husband and the self-proclaimed head of household you should have said hey we need to figure out what's wrong why are you not sexually attracted to me no you figured that because she's not giving me head and not fucking me, I'm going to go out and find another hole to stick my dick in. Instead of figuring out what's wrong with your wife and why she's not fucking you anymore, right? And that's, and I agree with Heavenly. I was like, yeah, that she got a point. She got a point because that's what you should have done, right? And then... He said, um, Melanie, Melody cheated before the show. And when the show, when they started on the show, that she told that he cheated, but she didn't tell her side. But then he came back and he was like, well, listen, I don't know if she did. I just had a feeling because she stopped having sex with me. And instead of communicating, you're going to play what you think in your mind is tit for tat, right? I'm going to be petty. You And then and then the thing about the lawyer, baby, I said, oh, Melody. So he said that the lawyer, his friend, his frat, I don't think it was his friend, but his frat um, was a lawyer looking over papers and works and paperwork and stuff like that. What did she say? Oh, um that I guess she was fucking the attorney or something child and that was the same attorney that sent his divorce papers you see how petty they are like do you see like this is the nigga you having crazy intimate conversations with is the same nigga that sent your husband <laughs> bitch is the same the same nigga that sent your husband divorce papers melody you know that is so petty <laughs> that's so petty they petty and that's what it is and that's all that what that's all that it is. Um, he says, but you need to take care of ladies, take care of your man from the beginning. Now I told you guys before that my father has given me advice. You know, my my father is a misogynist, right? So he he used to give me advice that would always in in relationship with advice, his advice would always ultimately serve the man. It wouldn't serve his daughter, it would serve the man. And advice that he gave me once before is never deny your man sex. Never deny your man sex. And I thought to myself, why would a man, why would anybody want to have sex with somebody who doesn't want to have sex with them? Right? If Melody doesn't want to have sex, just because she is your wife, that is not your body. That's her body. And I think a lot of people get confused, men and some women, they get confused and they believe once they get married that their body is their husband's and the husbands believe the same thing, that you're my wife, I own you. It's very much like slavery, right? It's very, very reflective of slavery. And why in the world would you want to have sex with somebody who wasn't who didn't want to have sex if i don't want to have sex if a woman doesn't want to have sex she's not going to be ready she's not going to be ready so why do you think oh and she could just give me some head i was so fucking disgusted i was like dude are you fucking serious right now 
And so because your wife won't give you ass and won't give you head, you going to dip out. And he said, men should speak up. Do what they do. Do what the women do. So come out and speak your piece. Now, that's where the arrogance come in because you're dead wrong. But she's wrong too if she cheated on him, right? And then now we're seeing, we're in this people's relationship by way of this show. And now all the stuff is coming out, right? Because how long has the show been on? They're in their third season and he's been with that woman for five years in a relationship on and off or whatever for five years. So that was before the show. That was before the show. So Melody, you had to know, like, that's my thing is like, and then Melody, if you're going to come on TV, maybe she thought, well, I mean, I'm sure she did get a lot of support when everybody found out that Martell was cheating on her and it started coming out in the blogs and everything and people started interviewing the women. Funky Daniva, I guess the baby mom or the girl, the, the, the mistress or the Ariane has Funky Daniva's number and was calling him to get Martell so he can get in contact with Martell. So you telling me y'all talk, but then you told Heavenly that we don't talk. And then when she asked him, is the girl pregnant? He was like, you're going to have to ask her, but you're going to, you have respect for her medical history, but not for Melody's. Cause you go, you told the whole world. Melody had two abortions. That's why Melody put a gag order, order on Martell. You shut up. You talk too fucking much. Home girl. You never shut up. Okay. You talk too much. But he was like, I'm going to be like the women. You out here talking on your platform? I'm going to be out here talking on my platform. Again, another example of tit for tat that they do. So he said he's the breadwinner. He's come. He's taking care of the kids. Bitch, when Martel said, I do it. I do it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Right in. Please say a command. Bluetooth audio. Bluetooth audio. Bitch, when I tell you, when he said, we're here. Hold on. When she start telling me no consistently, <laughs> and I'm up here doing all of this shit in this house. <laughs> I'm up here doing all this shit in this house. Now, when he said that, I was like, he got a point. Because when you look at Letitia and her husband, that nigga ain't doing a fucking thing. A goddamn thing with his children and martel is the dominant parent i think everybody i don't think anybody can take that away from him now we're not gonna take that away from him although that's not something he should be commended for but you know you do in relationships y'all know y'all are in relationships with people who is the dominant parent right and it typically is the the woman typically Typically, but because I've guessed because of how he was raised, I think the lack of his father being in his life, I think he does not want his, his children to experience that. But guess what? Now they're going to experience something worse, sir. And that's you not being home. And that's having another brother or sister that their mama didn't have. So, I mean, like, is that what you wanted to model as a man? You want to be a good father? Are you being a good father? When you cheat on your children's mother, you know, because I have this thing that, you know, I, I have this thing where I say it's two different roles. Y'all heard me say that, right? But then I was listening to Martell and Heavenly and I was like, it's not. It's two different roles, right? Because you have a relationship with your child and you have a relationship with the your your partner. And it is two different relationships. And although some men are good fathers and not good partners... Uh, but I think if you're in a partnership with someone and you're not treating the mother okay, right? The child is looking at that and they're watching that and they're thinking that it is okay to do that. Like M Marceau and Letitia, is that his name? The one that looked like he don't have no teeth right here. I can't remember. They're brothers. The one that, that has the construction place, not the other one with Kimmy. Not Kimmy's husband. Letitia's husband. You know who I'm talking about. And you can see a clear difference in the parenting roles where he feels like the woman is should be the, the dominant parent. And that's not what's happening here. So he feels that because he's doing all this stuff and then also outside in his mind thinking, niggas don't do what I'm doing. So I, I said to myself, I said, okay, I could see how he's rationalizing. Like I take care of the home. 
I'm the main breadwinner, although Melody makes her whole, whole money and her own money. And I got something to say about that. But he takes care of the kids. He says he don't drink. He's not hanging out. He's not partying. None of that. So that means to tell me that there's no outside influence except for Melody not giving you sex. And that's it. That's your only reason for going out of your marriage and developing a relationship with another woman so intimate that you produce a child. Even if it's head, if I request it. And my thing is, he had the kids in the house with him while he was on the interview. And I'm thinking, are the kids age appropriate to hear their father talk about their mother like that? I mean, it depends on how old they are. I know they're little, but after a while, some type, some types of conversations can't be had around children about their parent. Okay. Um, I said, are the kids age appropriate to be overhearing him have um, interviews like this? Heavenly asked him what the ideal woman was. And he just said, basically, if you married with your husband, your husband wants to have sex with you, have sex with him. I think it's very... It's, it's very dangerous to have that point of view because if you feel like that person is required to give you sex, you may take it from them. I think a lot of us know that even in marriage, if a man has a, if a man has sex with a woman and she doesn't want to, it is still considered rape because you don't have any dominion over her body. That's her body. And if you take from her body without consent, without her permission, without her saying, okay, let's do this. That's rape. And I think it's very dangerous for men to believe that. And there are a lot of women who believe that too. Like whenever my man asks me for some cootie cat, I'm gonna give it to him because he gonna dip out. And he said, I'm not a cheating man. This is not something I do. I didn't cheat on Melody, but this I have, this is when I, and I'm like, I don't know how many women there are or whatever, but She's saying she's had she had my back, but then she started dragging me. And considering what I've done for this family, I don't feel that it's fair that she's dragging me. Well, you did something to her, so she's upset with you, and so she wants to drag your ass. And she doesn't give a damn that you've supported her in the marriage, that you've helped build her up, that you are the dominant parent, that you are the breadwinner. You did something to her that hurt her, and she wants to let everybody know about it. And it doesn't matter because every, you can tell, Melody can get on TV. She could do a press conference and, and, and list every single thing Martell has done to her. Everything he's done to her. Do you know there'll be a line of women standing outside the press conference waiting to hop on Martell's dick? That Women don't care. Women don't care. And you would think... If you saw a man, because I think we just think we're going to be different. You think you're going to be different and you're not. And for me, it would be a testament like you're in this successful marriage with this woman. You still dipped out. You have you have a baby on the way. And then you've even created a relation, a five year relationship. A five year relationship with this woman. I feel like it was before. Um, he said, Melody, stop mess fucking him. Um, now this is what I said yesterday. He want Melody to put him first, right? Put him first. I'm doing this. I'm the breadwinner. I do all of this, all everything. He, he's taking, um, you know, score, right? Cause we do that when we play tit for tat. I'm taking score and I don't like the way you treat me. However, she don't like the way you treating her. You stick in your raw dick. And putting her life in danger because when you're not with Ariane, we don't know who Ariane is fucking. Hello? And when you stick your raw dick in Ariane's raw pussy, okay? You're gonna, and then you come back and try to stick your dick in Melody, your raw dick in Melody? Hello? No, I could see when women stop having sex with men something happened something's wrong she feels like you're doing something and i agree with heavenly like you didn't find out why she stopped having sex with you that's what you should have been worried about instead of somebody sitting in your lap that's what you should have been worried about but 
with men, as always, they are the center of their world. They only care about them, their own needs. When I tell you men have self-preservation down pat, that theory, they have it down. They will take care of themselves before anything and they will risk their families for it because of the lack of self-control. You don't have any self-control as maintained as you are and contained as you are, you still lack the self-control that you went out and cheated on your wife. No discipline. That says a lot about your character to me. Now, if people weren't so hell-bent on entering, if you're a non-monogamous human, you should not be entering in relationships with monogamous people. And you should not make agreements of monogamy if you know that you're a non-monogamous human being. And that's just what it is. You should find, and men can't handle when a woman is non-monogamous, right? They could be non-monogamous in their monogamous relationship, but the woman has to maintain the monogamy because a man can't handle knowing that his wife is sitting on somebody else's raw dick and putting somebody else's raw dick in her mouth, right? And slobbing on his knob. You can't, the visual, because men are visual and they can't, when they visualize that, you saw it. You saw an example of that in Best Man. He's visualize, visualizing what's happening and he can't stand it. And a lot of men, they're, they want the world to be centered around them. And when a woman is doing something outside the relationship, then the world is centered around her and he can't handle it. She's, she's centering her needs before his. And if you think that Melody should have put him first and been the wife and been at home, where would she be today? Where would she be today? She wouldn't have been able to leave. She wouldn't have been able to leave, but Melody got her own shit. And while you was, you know, supporting her, he said sometimes he had to pull her. But Melody has her own shit. And if, and if she approached her marriage the way you wanted to her to, to approach the marriage and make you first, where would she be right now if Melody made Martell first? I'll let y'all answer that question. Go find your, oh, she told him one time, go find your, your girlfriend and, and just, ha, and he just so happened to meet that girl that night. I don't believe that. The mistress, they called her at first. What made you stay after she cheated? Um, because she told him later on, I guess within the marriage, and maybe he thought like, I can't leave because I'm with these kids and I got all this stuff, but she was slacking. So he thought she cheated. He said to, he said, her mouth is disrespectful. You know, that mouth is disrespectful, almost as though I'm, if she's the man. So you have an awareness that men speak to women in a disrespectful tone. Because for you to compare Melody get having a disrespectful mouth, almost like she's the man and I'm the woman. Oh, so you have an awareness that men talk to women crazy with disrespectful mouths. Okay, I got I. I caught that. I don't know if anybody else caught that, but you have an awareness of it. Why I cheated, he said, because you at the way that you talk to me. That's why I cheated. So he would throw it in her face that he cheated on her. He ain't shit. Then he said he called the woman a peasant. Now I remember that. I remember it was a big, you know, roar in the community. Like he said that the people didn't like that he called her that, but he said he called her that because he wanted to make Melody feel good in that moment. So he was manipulating Melody in that moment. And she did feel good after she, after he called that woman a peasant. And then he apologized. And like Heavenly said, you just apologize so you can get back in that woman's pants. That's what happened. They called each other on the phone. So these women, they're basically sister wives. They're basically sister wives. A five-year relationship with a baby on the way. And it seems to me that Martel is turning into the person that he didn't want to turn to, which is his father. I don't know. They're a baby. Do people want to know that? He's looking at the thing. Do people want to know that? Honey, Martel ain't shit. I took so many notes. He said Melody had an abortion. 
can you save it i don't know why heavenly was trying to get him to say that he loved melody don't do that i don't like that i didn't like that at all um but he said i've done things to hurt us all i called her and or sent her an email saying i'll forgive you please forgive me it's a lot of tit for tat in their relationship um he says and it was a beautiful thing our relationship was beautiful all the accomplishments that we made our kids everything and I wish that this never happened. I wish this I wish this was a dream. I wish social media was a dream. I wish this show was a dream. I just wish this was all a dream. But then when Heavenly was like, so what what are you guys gonna do? How are you gonna, you know, salvage this relationship? He was like, nah, uh-uh. Um, I'm good, no. Uh-uh. We we need to part ways and maybe we'll come back in a few years, but right now, no. She needs to go off and blossom and I need to been you nigga, you been blossoming, okay? <laughs> You've been blossoming. You've been planting seeds, honey. We got a blossom that's about to come in about two or three months. <laughs> we got the blossom. <laughs> Man, Martel ain't shit. He says, I don't want to be lonely. I'm, I'm sure she don't want to be lonely. I don't know why he mentioned Cynthia Bailey, but I guess he didn't like that Cynthia divorced. Who she get a divorce from? Peter and then turned around and married Mike. But he said within a year. Now, it wasn't within a year. I didn't know why he mentioned Cynthia Bailey. I thought that was weird. But he said seven to eight, seven to eight people or eight to ten people, eight out of ten people in a relationship. If you're not the cheater, you're with the cheater. And that all comes from people entering into monogamy. The only time you're a cheater is if you agree to a monogamous relationship. Y'all need to stop agreeing to monogamous relationships. Otherwise, you will not be cheating. But see, men are socialize to be deceitful in relationships you can't be honest because you don't want the woman to do the same thing you're doing it's okay for a man to cheat it's normalized women take men back over and over and over again after cheating he could have babies all over you he's sticking his raw dick and you and you don't even know who and they and they'll take him back and have another baby like melody did like amina did with peter guns and them Y'all have it. Y'all let these niggas stick their raw dicks in you and you and who, whoever else that you don't know. Putting your fucking life at risk. And you think you're in a monogamous relationship. And the men, they don't, they don't know how to handle it. You tell a man, I'm not monogamous. They don't want nothing to do with you. They want to deal with you if you're, monogam you're monogamous to them while they're being non-monogamous. But they want you to be only one dick in your life. That's it. No, bruh. If you wanna, if you wanna be sticking your dick in a bunch of bitches, I I can sit on a bunch of laps. If that's the case, niggas don't like that. That's what happens if on uh, when you agree to monogamy and you're not a and uh, so many people are are pressured into that, like into the idea of marriage, into the idea of having a monogamous relationship. I think if you are married, that's probably the best type of relationship to have is a monogamous one. But if you're in a marriage and you are non-monogamous, I think you have to be honest and truthful. And men aren't socialized to be that when it comes to partnering with other people. They are, I don't know why, it's just like this air of deceit. They can't be honest. I don't get it. I don't understand it. Um, and that's just what it is. What's, an, what's the excuse to cheat, she asked him. What's your excuse that you cheated? And I just put monogamy isn't a natural thing. The construct of marriage, right? That's a construct. And it's for you to be in the idea of two people being together and that's it. When you enter and accept that, then you have to abide by something that biologically is not how humans operate we are relational that means we are able to relate to p other people on different levels and even at the same time right so when you are saying okay i'm gonna be monogamous but that's not how you feel inside then you need to say okay listen i'm not monogamous i'm not a monogamous person and then you need to go find you another person who's not monogamous so that you don't have to be labeled as a cheater. You're labeled as a cheater because you subscribe to a construct that isn't biologically natural, right? And so it's hard. And that's what that's what takes self-control and discipline and self-discipline. That's where that comes from. That's when I, when men cheat, I, I, that's the first thing I say. You don't have any self-control or discipline. And if you don't have any self-control or discipline, you damn sure can't lead. You can't. 
You just can't. It's childish. Um, and which when Heavenly started questioning him, like, when was the last time you see he was like, I didn't say that. I was, um, that's not how I put that. I didn't say it quite like that. Yes, you said it just like that. Now you want to play semantics. You playing games and you being manipulative. And it's and when somebody approaches something that serious with that amount of arrogance, it makes you mad at the person and it makes you not want to listen to the person. And then when that person starts playing word games and 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 riddles and shit, then it's like, listen, either you're going to be so I wish I would have interviewed him. I'm going to be like, "Listen, we're not playing these games. We're not playing word games." You are on this show, you are on this interview with me because you cheated on your wife and you got another woman pregnant. You're not going to sit up here and say, is she pregnant? You got to ask her. You're not going to sit up here. Everybody know the girl is pregnant. Everybody know the girl is pregnant. So you up here playing games, you're playing games. You're not serious. If I, I'm so glad when Melody... I was mad when Melody got pregnant, right? And that's what well, Rodney said. You shouldn't have got an abortion, but you definitely shouldn't have got pregnant, bitch. Like, why in the world would you do that? Why would you do that? And to me, when he said Melody had abortions, that looks that looks that looks weird. If you're gonna have two abortions while you're married, and then all of a sudden you having one, now I'm looking at you crazy, Melody. Like I would, if I would be like, girl, like. You had two abortions in your marriage, but why you choose to have this one? So what was you, what was the mother babies? And that's what he was like. I was like, am I the father? So why you have an abortion? Cause it's odd for a woman to have an abortion within a marriage, right? It's odd unless she has some level of knowledge. Like I just don't want to have any more kids with this man because of whatever reason, whatever reason, it could be anything. It could be whatever reason she wants and she has a right to, but it is odd to have a, an abortion in a marriage it is unless you have some awareness of mm -mm. but melody left she came back had a baby now you got this it's just i don't know like i'm like melody you stupid too like you stupid too and do i believe she cheated on him yeah i believe it I believe in Melody. I don't believe Melody is an angel. I believe they play tit for tat. And now they tit for tat is just on TV for us. And that's pretty much it. I thought the interview, I thought she did okay. I really would like, I mean, at the end of the interview, she, like I said, she started getting very personal with him and saying that, you know, I would never, um, I would never, um, let any, anybody that I know date you because you just seem like you're a cheater. And, um, and then he asked her too, do you deny you're a man? She said, yeah, but he's not out here doing what you're doing. You don't deserve that. And I think that's when, when a woman stops having sex with a man, it's something the man did. It's nine times out of 10, it's something going on with the man. And and we, we just shut down. We shut down like, mm -mm, I'm good. I'm good. There are some women who will continue to have sex with their husbands with a, with a clear, conscious understanding that he's cheating on you and there's some women that be like no i'm good and if and if melody would have put martel first where would she be today stuck like letitia with her silly ass anyways y'all that's my time um what did y'all think of the interview i really thought martel thought he was going to get the male identified heavenly I, th I think that's what he thought. And she was like, when she said, when she said, Martell, when was the last time you slept with that woman? When was the last time you saw that woman? And he was like, I haven't seen her in a minute. See, you playing games. Don't play games. Don't play games with me. If you're going to be honest, you got to be honest. You can't play these. And I think that's what, how Heavenly was kind of questioning him because you saw Heavenly would change her question and how she formed her question. If you in a relationship with somebody... And you have to be intentional with your questions. That's a fucked up place to be. Because you know this person plays word games, semantics, and tells riddles. So you have to ask questions very lawyer-like and very deliberate and very specific so that you can get the answer, not a lie. And right, and so he's like, oh well, I didn't say it like that. No, you did say it like that. You did. It was something he said, and he was like, I didn't say it like that. What did he say? I forgot what he said. Seeing her now, no, is there a baby? Do they want to know? Go ask her that. 
Was she pregnant before? Yes. Melody had an abortion. She was cheating. Was I the father? Why get an abortion? Melody had an abortion, but he told Melody's medical history, but didn't want to tell if the other woman was pregnant. You protect. See, that's kind of shit that get makes people mad. You more you more protective of this woman than you are of your wife. That's when people get upset. Like nigga, what the fuck? You want to be manipulative? Oh, I, I you know I was sorry. I said sorry to her. A lot of married women don't like to hear you being apologetic to the woman. They don't. They don't want to hear that. What? <laughs> anyways y'all i'm out of here take care of each other that was a long video i'm sorry i took a lot of notes and it was a long interview and i said the interview could have stopped at 29 minutes she had asked all really you know really kind of good questions and at the 29 minute mark she could have it could have been over that's what i wrote down it could it could have been 25 29 minutes less than 30 minutes but it was like almost an hour so that's what we got y'all We'll come back tomorrow and talk about Shay and them. Because I got to take more notes on Shay. Shay made me so mad. Her mama ain't changed. I, t I tell you that. I can bet you a thousand dollars her mother turned right back to who she was. All this shit she was doing in that performance shit. Honey, I recognize it from a, from a mile away, honey. I recognize that shit from a mile away. I've seen it all. It's a, and the lady had the same name as my mother. I've seen it all before, lady. All that performative shit. That lady went right back to the way she was before she walked into that door she was dressed cute though <laughs> that was that's that's what you do you dress cute when you know you about to talk some bullshit and be a bullshitter <laughs> anyways y'all take care of each other peace